what you see your parents do really, really sets the tone for what you learn from your parents. Your parents can preach all day long and you may learn things from what they're preaching, but everything that I'm telling you I've learned from my mom, I've seen my mom model it. I've seen her be the example in it. And that is what taught me how to do it. Not only did I hear her say it, I saw her teach me how to do it. Hey everybody, it. you already know who it is. It's Dominique with This Girl's Worth. Thank you so much for tuning into this video. Happy, happy, happy Mother's Day to all the amazing, beautiful women out there who are mothers and especially to my own mother, mom, you are my heart, you know this, I love you. And in celebration of you, I wanted to do this video of 10 things I've learned from you, my mom. I just feel like my mom is the epitome of a phenomenal woman. She is a gracious woman, a patient, loving, loving, kind, forgiving, uh, just a person who ex exudes humility. Like there's not enough great things that I could say about my mother. So without further ado, I'm gonna get into the 10 things that I learned from my mom. First and foremost, what I learned from my mother is that obedience to God and a prayer life with God equals a relationship with God. I did not grow up in church, but yet I have seen my mother be one of the most faithful, diligent, obedient women to God that I've ever known in my life. My mom answers to God. She worries about how God thinks about her, if God is pleased with her. And I learned not in church, not from people saying the right thing or certain types of language that people use in the church community. I learned what a real relationship with God looks like through my mother. It was through my mom's prayers. It was through my mom praying with me, much seeing her prayer life as a young girl and being so embedded in my life already, seeing my mom being a praying mother. I've seen my mom just you know, pray about things and things work out. I've seen my mom say, this is what God told me to do. Even when it didn't make sense, and it seemed like she was sacrificing herself and she was obedient to what God told her to do. And then God reward her and bless her and keep her. So I learned that as I was developing my own relationship with God and understanding God for myself, that a prayer life was essential and obedience to God was essential. So thank you so much, Mom, for modeling that in the home because that is what's carried me here today. That's what allowed me to have the success that I've had today. Your love, what you that sacrificed to allow me to be here today. Um, but just your love, mom, that prayer life, that relationship with God, all those gospel songs. Even in my video, the one I sung with, I talked to my brother just the other day. He was feeling kind of low. If he cannot turn to me, where could I go? I don't know how I strayed so far away. I want to come home, but I'm afraid it's a little too late. I reply to him. Before I get lost in that song, my mom uh, prayed, listened to those songs. Yolanda Adams, Karen Clark shared, the Clark sisters, uh, Kirk Franklin, Mary Mary. She played those around the house. So I saw my mom's relationship with God play out in front of me, and it was the most beautiful thing. So thank you for that, mom. There's not a, there's, I cannot go on that point enough. Every time I talk about it, I almost start to cry just because I think that that's the best blessing that my mom has ever given me was modeling a true relationship with God. The second thing that my mom taught me was patience. Now, I don't know if God gave her like a special gift of patience, but my mom is the most patient human being that I've ever met in my entire life. My mom's patience with people exceeds a level that I'm like, I don't even understand how you are this patient with people, with things, with circumstances. My mom was like, God will work things out. I trust God. I've never seen my mom get frustrated because she had to wait on something. I've never seen my mom, like ever. She's so gracious. She's so kind. She's so patient and understanding. Never, ever seen her get upset because she had to wait for anything, anything. My mom is the most patient person I know. So my mom modeled patience. She didn't all, She didn't only say that, you know, the meek shall inherit the earth. She didn't tell us only what the Bible and the scripture said about patience. She modeled patience herself. The third thing that my mom taught me is handling your business. My mom did what she had to do. My mom didn't make excuses for anything. My mom was never like, I'm tired or I don't want to or I don't feel like it. My mom used to tell us all the time that you can't do, you can't not do something because you don't feel like it. That wasn't. I don't think it's exactly how she said it, but you get what I'm saying, right? You know, like my mom always never, never instilled in any of her children that like, you go off of your feelings. I've never seen my mom go off of her feelings. I've never seen her be like, you know, Dominique, I'm, you know, I, I want to go to work, but I just can't go to work today because I don't feel like it. My mom didn't believe in that. My mom didn't believe in just idleness and just sitting around and doing nothing. 
you know, when it came to her handling her business, she may not force you to do something, but she gonna handle her business. My mom doesn't care, if, you know, if it's rain or shine, if she's not feeling well or not, my mom's going to handle business, which stuck with me because as I got older and I faced obstacles, I was like, I'm gonna do what I have to do to get through this. So anytime that I faced an obstacle, I never believed that quitting was an option. It's because I never saw my mom give up. I never saw her make an excuse. My mom raised six children and had jobs and started a business and started different businesses at different points in my life. So I never ever, she didn't make excuses for her circumstances. She always said, you know, I may have come from a rough background, but that's not an excuse for me to not get up and work and do what I have to do and me to not take care of my kids and me not to love my kids properly. She never made excuses for herself. So my mom handled her business and it taught me how to handle my business. So thank you mom for that because even today, sometimes it feels like I wanna take the easiest route possible. I don't wanna fight to get promoted in my job. I don't wanna, you know, I don't wanna work so hard all the time. But I'm like, you know what? My mom never made excuses. And she has six kids and I'm not about to make excuses why I am young, single without kids and why I can't work harder. So mom, you are amazing. Thank you for modeling that for me. The fourth thing that my mom instilled in me and this is something I'm learning now. I had a hard time with it when I was younger but I'm now learning this. Is that like, my mom used to always say, Dominic, you have a gift of singing. Dominic, you can act. Dominic, why don't you model? Dominic, why don't you write? Why don't you use your gifts to make a way for you, provide a way for you? For you? And I was stubborn and I wanted to do things my own way. And I do believe that I was obedient in my path and going to college and what God told me to. But now that I'm older, I'm like, you have these gifts of singing. You have these gifts of acting. You have these gifts of writing. Dominic, like, why would you sit there under somebody's company and not utilize those gifts, which could provide a way for you and brings you joy and fulfills you at the same time? So my mom, ever since I was younger, been trying to get me to get into the arts, and she, and I know she, she, I used to give her such a hard time. Like anytime she'd ask me to sing in front of people, I would just cry because I'm like, I don't want to sing in front of nobody. But now that I'm older, I'm like, my mom was trying to provide a way for me so that I'm not now 25 trying to figure out how to financially build wealth for the future. She was trying to give me those tips to use the gifts that God gave me to do what was necessary to handle my business. And that if I wanted to do other things, I could do other things, but I wasn't doing it, trying to financially figure out how to do it. So my mom instilled that in me. My mom used her gifts. She, my mom's a singer, my mom's a dancer. My mom used to, uh, she taught uh, acting. My mom taught, my mom was like a, a talent manager and a talent agent, and she's getting back into doing that stuff. So praise God, you know, cause that is her gift and finding talent and cultivating talent. So. You know, that's what my mom still to me. And now I'm 25 and I'm like, you know what? It's about to be on. Like, you know, I'm going to use these gifts and I'm going to be obedient to how God wants me to use these gifts, which is, you know, this girl's worth is, is the first stage of that, that building that out really. But it was really, I really credited to my mom because my mom always was like, you have these gifts and you would be stupid to work somebody else's job building their dream when you have a ton of talent and can build your own dreams. So thank you, mom, for instilling vision in me. Thank you, mom, for doing that. The fifth thing that my mom taught me is that you're going to make mistakes. I remember my mom used to always sit down and she would tell us things as we were young and try to teach us lessons and I would just be like, okay, well I learned it, I'm not gonna do that, I'm not stupid enough to make that mistake. And now that I'm older, I make mistakes like everybody else in this world. And what actually helped me, I went through a long journey of not feeling shame and guilt and things like that. Um, but what actually helped me was remembering when I was younger, my mom used to say, you're going to make mistakes. And that began to actually, that helped me actually look at myself like I was a human being and look at other people like they were human beings. Like, oh, we all make mistakes. I think sometimes when you're young, you feel like you are, a no, you're a bit of a know-it-all. You're invincible. You think, hey, like, I know, I know, I know. I hear you, mom. I hear you, dad. I'm not going to do those things. I'm not going to make the mistakes you made. I'm not going to make the mistakes my older siblings make. And then sometimes you do make those mistakes or you might do something similar that they did, um, but you know, maybe you have more knowledge so you don't do exactly the same things they did. But sometimes you make stupid mistakes, you know, like staying in a relationship too long or compromising yourself in certain situations because you didn't know any better. And my mom always taught me you're gonna make mistakes. And so that ha they helped me with, you know, have some grace towards myself. Also helped me remember like, like when I, sometimes you make a mistake and you fix it on that mistake and then I was like, oh, Dominic, you're, you're still living. You're going to make more mistakes. So as I have grace for myself because my mom was honest about the fact that she wasn't perfect and then she also said, all of you here, all of you little kids here who are 
five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, twelve, and up, you're gonna make mistakes. You're gonna make mistakes. She never looked at us like we weren't human beings. She never looked at us like we were just gonna be these perfect people, and that we were, and that every she's gonna know every single thing about us. She always treated us like you guys are going to make mistakes. You guys are going to be human beings. You're gonna learn your lessons, and so because of that, it helped me to have some grace for myself. So. Thank you, Mom, for instilling in me that I'm a human being and I'm going to make mistakes sometimes, but it's okay. I can keep going. God will forgive me. So thank you, Mom, for that. Thank you, Mom, for that love. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Another thing that my mom taught me is always give God the glory. Now, my mom is the type of person that she don't like when you say I, I, I too much. She does not like that. She doesn't like when you say I, I, I too much. I did this and I did that and I worked hard for this and I got this. My mom's like... God blessed you with the ability to work hard for you to do this. So my mom is still that in me from when I was young. So when I start saying I, I, I too much, I always remember like, thank you, Father, for what you allowed me to do. And thank you, Father, for the gifts that you gave me and the mind that you gave me and the money that you gave me and the home that you gave me and the ability and the talent. Thank you, Father, for what you gave me that allows me to do this. So I praise God for what I do. But my mom instilled that when I was younger. And even yesterday, I was talking to her about something. And she was like, I'm never going to write God out of the story. It's always what God allows. It's always what God uh, ordains. It's always what God created. God's in control. And sometimes we want to figure out things for ourselves. And just remember that even as we go through stuff, there's nothing that you know psychology or anything can tell you. Because sometimes God is protecting you. And God, God, God. And she, oh, God is always at the center. So if you talk to my mom and you try to talk about, I did this and I'm so smart. I'm this and I'm this. My mom's like, God gave you the ability to do that. Don't forget it. So my mom always taught me, always give God the glory. Even for the small things, give God the glory. If you cut off your hair and your hair's growing back, give, give God the glory. If you have money in, your, in the bank account, give God the glory. If you were able to graduate college despite how hard it was, give God the glory that you came out of the other side. Give God the glory that you left the bad relationship in the first place. Give God the glory that you got food to eat, a car to drive, gas in your car. Give God the glory in general for just making it. Give God the glory. You're smart because God allowed you to conquer those tests and things like that. So I never, never ever grew up thinking it was all on my mind. I was like, well, this is God. So even now, um, and as I read the Bible and understood my own faith, I understood like this is always God. Like if it works out, if it's a blessing, it's from God. No matter how much work I put in, because you have to think about it. How many other people worked just as hard as you did and it didn't work out? How many people? You don't even know hundreds of thousands it's only by god's favor that you are where you are today so because my mom instilled that in me i always remember and i never got a big head because i was like well i was like even if i did work hard i put in the work even though i did do my part and put in the work god's favor allowed this to work out for my good so thank you father for that and thank you mom for instilling that in me number seven is my mom always taught me that you don't need other people's validation my mom Always, I remember when I was younger, I was like teased and bullied when I was a kid and I had like no friends. And, um, you know, I would have like a friend every once in a while, but I just in general didn't have friends. And I remember like my mom taught me from a young age, she was like, you don't necessarily, she's like, I'm sorry that you're going through that. And she was empathetic, but she's like, you don't need people to like you. She was like, God set you apart. God created you special. God created you different. And if you're around the right people and around the right circumstances, they'll accept you for who you are and who God created you to be. So that taught me. That taught me that like, I don't need people's validation. I don't need people to like me. So I never ever sought people to like me or never tried to fit in or never tried to be what people wanted. I always knew that God created me special. God created me different and the right people will gravitate towards me. The right people will appreciate me. The right people will love me. And that carried with me for a long time. And even that's why when I would be in situations where maybe I wasn't honoring myself or maybe I was compromising myself in some way to be around this person or to be in this relationship, there was always this internal fight in me that was like, no, I'm not going to accept anything less than who I am. And it's because my mom instilled that identity in me from a child that as I began to learn and understand God's word about who I am and understand relationships and understand different things, I'm like, no, this doesn't honor me. This doesn't serve me. This doesn't take me to where God is planning on taking me and so this has to go so just remember you don't need people's validation and thank you mom for living that as an example I've never seen you ever seek anybody's validation I've never seen you do things for do things for other people's approval and that showed me that I don't need to do that I don't need to do things for other people's approval as well so I love you mom thank you for that gift and the eighth thing is very similar to 
number seven, but my mom always taught me that you have to be around people in, on your caliber and in your level. So when she talks about that, she wasn't saying it like, Dominic, you're better than other people, but she was saying like, you have to be around other like-minded people. You're a ambitious girl. You're a smart girl. You're a driven girl. You're a God-fearing child. So if you're that type of person, you need to be around other people like that who can affirm you and edify you. When you're not around the right types of people, she's like, you can get caught up in things because people can bring you down to somebody that you're not or they're going to drain you. So I learned that from my mother and that's what also helped me to stand firm in being by myself and never feeling like I needed other people because I was like, hey, if I can't find the right people around me who meet me and that's why, you know, then, I, then I'm not going to have them around and that's why in my life if I did have friends and things like that and then I started to outgrow them, I felt comfortable being like, hey, I'm outgrowing these people because I always, rem I always remembered my purpose, my purpose on here and what, my purpose on this earth and what I'm here to do. And so it was never about other people. It was never about validation from other people. It was never about getting, you know, getting what I needed from other people. It was always about who is Dominique, who is Dominic, what was Dominique created for, what plans do, does God have for Dominique, and, you know, are these people in alignment with that vision? And if it wasn't, then I always would pray to God, hey, God, if this is not for me, remove them out of my life. And every single time, those who were not for me got removed out of my life. So God is faithful in that way. And I learned that from my mom. My mom taught me that, hey, like you need to get with people on your level. You need to be in a relationship with somebody on your level. You need to be in a relationship with someone who's goal oriented, who saves money, who's who loves God, who's empathetic, who's caring. You need friends like that. You need friends who trust in the Lord or are about something, who are doing something. You know, not people who are emotionally dumping on you or people who are abusing your kindness or people who are taking up your skill set to help them, but they're not pouring into you. So my mom always taught me about that balance of relationships and remembering who I am, the boss that I am. And so thank you, mom, for that gift. Thank you because it's been carrying me all this time and it's going to continue to carry me because of your amazing wisdom. The ninth thing that my mom taught me is learn to discern God's voice for yourself. My mom used to get mad at me because I would call her and I'd be like, Mom, what is God saying about this? Mom, what is God saying about that? Mom, what is God telling you about this? And I remember one time, especially because I had gotten to my dream college, but I couldn't afford it financially, so I'd have to take out a bunch of loans, which I didn't want to graduate with college debt. And I remember I got in and I was so desperate to go to my dream school that I was like, let me just take out the loans, whatever, it's going to work itself out. And I remember I, w I prayed to God and I let the situation go. And I was like, Mom, I don't know what I should do. And what is God telling you about this? And she said, you know what, Dominique? How about you pray and ask God what he's telling you? And I was like, I do pray, but I don't get an answer. She said, no, you need to pray and learn God's voice for yourself. You can't always call me and ask me what God is telling me about your life. In that moment, it clicked like, dang, she really got mad at me. In my head, I was thinking, she really got mad at me. Like, you're my mom. You're supposed to tell me what God is telling you. But... That moment right there was a moment of spiritual growth and maturity for me because I opened myself up and I prayed for the first time in earnesty. And I said, God, I need to know what you're telling me. I need you to direct my path. And God told me to let it go. Can you believe it, it was my dream school, guys? I ended up graduating from that school, long story short. Yeah, but it was one of those mom cut the court moments. It was like, snap, snap, nope. You gotta figure this out for yourself. So I thank her for that because then after that moment, something inside of me spiritually was like, okay and now it's like literally i like now you cannot tell me anything if god told me something you can't tell me nothing different i know what i heard from god so thank god for that thank god for mothers who know when their children need to grow and they know when their children need to be nurtured and so they they you know they have that amazing balance and the tenth and final thing that my mom gave me and my mom taught me was grace my mom is the most gracious person that i've ever met and I see her exude so much grace to everyone, to those she loves. I see her people make mistakes, people who do things to hurt her, or they'll say things against her, and my mom will be like, that's all in God's hands, and I'm gonna just let that slide. Now, she's not a pushover, definitely not a pushover. Um, maybe a little bit to the people she really, really loves, to those she loves, she can, she's so, she, lo she loves hard. My mom's a hard, she, when she loves you, she loves hard. But my mom is not a pushover. And for sure, like, you know, the thing about her is that she has this quiet confidence that's like, like, fine, you just did me wrong and you think you're getting over on me, but God will take care of it. And I kid you not, I will see stuff that my mom, that other people say she let go and God will take care of stuff. And I'd be like, that God was coming to them. So my mom, my mom 
is so gracious and so loving and she doesn't she's not revengeful she's not that she's not a, a person who harbors anger in her heart she is such a loving person and that taught me it like i want to be like that i'm working on it my mom is the queen of god's about to take care of i have one more thing that i want to say my mom gave me which is the gift of singing I didn't put that in there because I'm like, well, she did teach me some things about singing, but I was stubborn when I was little. My mom gave me the gift of singing. I got it down from her because my dad is not a singer. Love my dad, but he is not a singer. My mom is a singer, and she's a beautiful singer, and I really wish that she would sh sing more, but my singing talent really, really comes from my mom, and so, um, you know, it was passed down. So I thank God for that. Um, so that's technically 11 things that my mom gave me, and taught me of course there's so many at first i was going to do 25 since i'm 25 years old but i said ain't nobody about to watch a video with 25 different things that my mom blessed me with in terms of knowledge and grace and understanding and just being the example but my mom is the example in every single one of these things in my life and i still am striving to be like her and more abundantly i'm like hey god my mom did so much to give to me and i want to take what she gave and multiply it father so teach me how so my mom is amazing. I honor her. I love her. I respect her so much. And uh, I'm just so blessed to have her. And anybody who knows her, they feel the same way. They're like, she's a phenomenal woman. The most amazing thing about it is she never ever pretends to be perfect. She always says, I'm a work in progress. And my goal is to please God, not to please people. And so my mom, just the, just the confidence and the beauty that my mom exudes and the grace, it's like, I want to, I would love to be anything like her but i love my mom i love you so much mom happy mother's day i wish that i could be there and spend time with you but i hope that you're celebrating i hope that you're resting and taking care of yourself and i cannot wait to see you soon i love you mom love all of you guys love all the mothers out there hope you're having an amazing spectacular mother's day thank you so much for what you do to sacrifice so that us children can thrive and live so thank you love all of you hope you have a blessed day and i'll talk with you soon bye